Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we're going to be creating a simple temperature logging project. So with this, we're using our standard analog temperature uh, sensor. We are going to be taking the values from that analog temperature sensor, and we are going to be storing those values to a micro SD card. Uh, on top of that, we are also going to be creating a timestamp. So essentially that we will be creating a type of data file. What will happen is we will have the temperature in Fahrenheit, comma, space, what the timestamp is, is, and basically that will be written to a micro SD card. We can then take that micro SD card and we can put it into a computer and then we can view it either as a text file or in an Excel spreadsheet. Or since we're using the, the comma separated values, basically what we're doing is we're creating a CSV uh, file. We could even then import that information into any number of database products. So for today's project, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using a data login module, and obviously we're going to be using a micro SD card. So this is the, these are the new components that we'll be using for the project today. Now the warning, warning for today's project is I did write the code, so while the Arduino is on, you can actually take the micro SD card out, you can read it somewhere else, and then you can put it back into the Arduino device without theoretically theoretically having to turn the Arduino device on and off. I will warn you though, this is the warning, that the code works, the code works. Basically, you can, you can turn the Arduino on, you can shove the card in, you can have the Arduino write to the card however many number of times. While the Arduino is on, you can pop the card out, again, to go do something with it, and then you can pop the, the card back into the Arduino and let it keep functioning, all without rebooting the Arduino. So I can say in all of my tests, that does work. The warning here is that might not be the best idea. So basically when you are, when you're writing to a micro SD card, uh, there is the potential that there might be some type of corruption, possibly, maybe. So if this is in a production environment, I would recommend that your process not be to simply uh, push in and pull out the micro SD card willy nilly. You might theoretically get some corruption in there. I haven't seen it in this particular project. Again, for these little demonstrations, I'd rather have my code uh, make it so I can just pop the card in and out without having to reboot the Arduino. But theoretically, theoretically, putting the card in and out uh, while the Arduino is active could possibly run you into a problem. Uh, the other warning warning that I will give you today is that for this particular project, when we're dealing with a timestamp, what we're going to be dealing with is the milliseconds. Basically how we're going to be creating the timestamp is the milliseconds since the Arduino has rebooted. So basically every time uh, the Arduino reboots, uh, it creates a little counter that counts, you know, how many milliseconds it's been since the Arduino has been rebooted. And so we're using that as a timestamp. Uh, to be clear, in a production environment or anything close to a production environment, that's a crappy timestamp to use. Uh, again, here, I'm just using it to basically show you how you can start to build a CSV file, but that's not what you would want to use in anything near the real world. One of the big problems there being is basically it Every time you restart the Arduino, uh, again, it restarts that counter for the milliseconds. So theoretically, you could have uh, multiples of the exact same timestamp, right? Because 100 milliseconds since reboot, you could actually get that multiple times. Because every time you reboot, then you know, you'll know you get records for 100 milliseconds past that reboot time. So you can get some weird issues with that. I am just showing you how to use a timestamp today, again, just to show you how to build out that CSV file. If you were going to build something like this in the real world, what you would want is a real-time clock module. So this is actually a clock module that you can add. Basically, you can connect onto your Arduino, and all it is is a clock. <laughs> It's a big clock. Look at that thing. That's a massive thing to be a clock. Uh, but what, basically what this does, is you can see it has a battery on it too, is you're able to set the clock to whatever the, the current time value is on here, and then it keeps that value, and then your Arduino can read from the real-time clock. So basically what you would want to do, and again, any kind of quasi-production environment, is you would want a real-time clock connected to your Arduino. When you do the timestamp, you would want that timestamp value getting pulled from the real-time clock 
clock uh, instead of, like I say, what we're doing in here with a little millisecond thing. So those are just some things to, to keep in mind. Again, not any big problems. I've been playing around with this. Everything works fine, but, but definitely some things you need to keep in mind if you're going to be putting this into any kind of environment where it's really going to be used and the information is actually going to be valuable. So with that out of the way, uh, the cool thing is, is the data logging module is actually incredibly easy to use as long as you wire everything up properly. So let's go over to the workbench. I will show you how this project has been wired up. Then we'll go, go and take a look at the code and then we'll take a look at the final results. So here's our little project. Again, we're using an analog temperature sensor. This is kind of the default sensor that I always use for projects uh, because it's an easy way to get a dynamic reading uh, to be able to do something with uh, without getting too complicated. Basically with our analog temperature sensor here, uh, we have the ground going to the ground on the Arduino. We have the, the actual sensor pin going to A5 like we normally do. Uh, and then we have the five volt and that's coming over the breadboard here because we do need to sp uh, split the, uh, the five volt uh, for the temperature sensor and for the little uh, data logging module. This is the data logging module here. Again, if you have a micro SD card, all you have to do is simply push the micro SD card in and it's now in your Arduino. Then you simply push it out and it ejects and then you can pull it out of the Arduino. It's a pretty simple, easy thing to use. Uh, now with this, uh, we do have a lot of wires. So there are a lot of wires that are involved uh, for this little uh, data logging module. Uh, so we have the power so basically if we flip this thing over um, I don't know if you can see it from up there uh, but basically we have a number of things so we have ground so ground will then go to ground on the Arduino we have VCC so this takes 5 volts VCC and so we're sending that over to the breadboard uh, over here uh, then we have meso mosi and SCK so basically with these uh, it's written into the code and it's written into uh, the uh, the instructions I'll give you but these go over over to 13, 12, and 11 uh, on the board. Uh, and so those have to go to the board uh, at that location and they can't be moved around. The final, the final uh, wire that you're going to have is what's called the CS wire. So the CS wire, I am actually sending to the digital pin for digital pin four. The thing about this is this actually can be modified to a different pin number. So you could put this onto a different pin, five, six, seven, some other pin here, and then you can modify that within the code itself. So it's important to understand that the MISO, the MOSI, and the SCK, those are going to be coming to 11, 12, and 13. Those, that's that's a static. That's where you're always going to put them. But then for the CS wire, that can go to a different digital uh, port if you wanted to, uh, but the default standard is going to be to port four. And so this is essentially what it looks like. It's a little bit ugly, uh, but the wiring is pretty simple. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code itself. So here we are at the code. So this is the sketch that I created. And so for this, what it's going to do is it's going to read the value from the analog temperature uh, sensor. It will then print that to the SD card and it will also print that out on the serial monitor. Now up at the top, so these are the standard settings, again, for the MOSI connector, the MISO connector, the CLK connector, and then the CS connector. So MOSI is always going to go to pin 11, MISO is going to go to pin 12, CLK is going to go to pin 13 and then the CS uh, this is the one that you can theoretically modify uh, but the standard is going to be to pin 4 so they, that's basically the, the pinage of when you're going to be dealing with the data module then past that we are then going to be including two libraries so we're going to be including the SPI library and the SD library both of these libraries are default standard with Arduino so you shouldn't have to add anything else the next thing that we're going to then do is we're going to define the temperature sensor pin. So for that analog temperature sensor, we need to define the analog pin for it. And so sensor pin is simply going to point, point to A5. Obviously, you can move that to a different analog pin, but we're going to keep it at A5. Uh, then we are going to create a file. Uh, so we have the file here, and the name of that file is simply going to be my file. So we're going to create a file uh, called my file. Then past that, we're going to go down here and we're actually going to go into the setup loop. So serial.begin at 9600. So we're going to start the, uh, the connection for the serial monitor. Then we're going to do serial.print initializing SD card. So we'll simply have text that prints out that we're initializing the SD card. And then we have this while loop here. So basically what this while loop is going to do is while SD.begin doesn't. 
So basically, why, while SD doesn't begin at pin four. So this four here, that relates to that CS connector. So again, if you modify that for some reason, if you put in a five or seven or three or whatever, uh, then you would have to change that. So the four here is basically the digital pin that it's connecting to. So what it's saying here is while the SD card doesn't begin, so this exclamation point is that it fails, it's going to serial.println startup SD card is in initialization failed and basically what it's going to do here is it's going to keep looping until it works so possibly you plugged in uh, the SD card reader the SD card module into the wrong digital uh, pin port so you can take a look at that possibly you did not actually insert your SD card if for any reason it can't read the SD card it's going to keep looping through saying that the initial startup SD card initialization failed once it stops failing so once it can read that the SD card is there it'll drop out of the while loop and then it'll say startup initialization success so then it will say okay it's now successful we can read to the card then we're going to come down here and the top up here is basically we're going to be creating the variables for the uh, temperature and for the timestamp. Uh, this is the same default cut and paste we use for almost all projects using the analog temperature sensor. So this is basically just going to give us a temperature Celsius if you want it and the temperature Fahrenheit, which is what we normally use since we're in the United States. Then we're going to come down here. We're going to create a timestamp. Uh, and that's going to be the milliseconds. So this function reads how many milliseconds to be clear since the Arduino booted up, right? So again, just realize that when you're dealing with timestamps and we're going to make this a long. Uh, do you realize if you use int, int maxes out at something like 33,000. So if you're, if, you're, if you're counting up, it only goes up to like 33,000 something or other. So with a timestamp in milliseconds, the millisecond value may get very, 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 very big. And so that's where, why we're using the long data type here because that will be able to give us a very large uh, numeric number. So just something to keep in mind. If you use int instead of long, you'll run into some weird problems when you actually go to, to read the file. So something to realize. So here, then we're going to have the temperature Fahrenheit and we're going to have the, uh, the, the timestamp value. So again, this is the void loop. So this is the main loop that we're going to be looping through once everything started. And so what I'm doing here is while sd.begin at four serial.print line uh, SD card no longer readable. So for some reason in the loop, if the SD card is no longer readable, it will print out on the serial monitor, it'll print out the SD card is no longer readable. So this is something that allows me to be able to plug in the card and unplug the card kind of willy nilly, basically because it's always looking to see if the card is there. If the card is not there for some reason, it'll simply print out that the card is no longer readable until you plug it in. And then at that point, it will then go and it'll actually start trying to print to uh, the, 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 the the file on the SD card and then it'll also print things out on the serial monitor so you know what's going on so this is the loop that we have here then okay so my file so this my file that's the variable that we created up here for file so we're going to have my file equals SD dot open so we're using that function for sd.open. Then we're giving it a name, so temp.log.txt. So again, when you're thinking about a data type file, again, whatever name you put here, it doesn't matter. The Arduino doesn't give a damn. The, the Arduino doesn't care about extensions. It doesn't care about file names. It just, it just wants something, right? You could, you could have this temp.log.txt dog poop for all of it cares why that's important is again think about think about what uh product you're going to be using to read this file when you plug it into your computer right so if i know i'm going to be using excel or numbers or some kind of spreadsheet program to read this file then i would want to name this as uh, temp log dot csv so it automatically opens up with a spreadsheet piece of software again if i'm going to be importing this into some kind of a database software whatever software that uses i may want to use that extension so that that software knows what to do with this file i'm simply using temp log dot txt because we're going to open it up as a text file um, as we go forward 
past that, then you do comma. So again, you have to put, you have the, uh, the name for the file with the extension in between uh, double quotation marks, then you do comma, and then you're going to be saying what you want to do. So basically the action that we're going to be taking is file underscore write. We are going to be writing to the file. So when you do sd.open, you can either do file read or file write. For what we're going to be doing, we are going to be writing to the file. So then here, what we're going to say is if my file, so basically with this, if it's actually able to open the templog.txt, it's able to write to it, it is then going to do file, my file, so this name dot print, and then it's going to print the temperature F, whatever the value for the temperature Fahrenheit is, then it's going to do my file dot print. And then what we're doing here is we're putting a comma and then a space, again, for that CSV, that comma separated value format. Then we're going to do uh, myfile.println. So it'll print the value and then go to the next line. And then we're going to print the value for timestamp. And that, of course, is going to be the milliseconds since the Arduino started. Then we're going to do myfile.close. So we're going to close the file. So basically, if uh, all of this works properly, after this point, we're going to print all of this to the, the file on the SD card else, if for some reason my file isn't working, it's going to simply serial.println error opening file. So at this point, it might be something such as maybe there's something corrupted in the data structure on the SD card. So, so if you get this, uh, the, the Arduino was able to read that the SD card was there. So it knows that the SD card is present, but for some reason it might not be able to write to the file. Maybe it's not formatted properly, so it should be formatted in, in the FAT, FAT32. So maybe it's not formatted properly. Maybe there is some kind of corruption on the card, so on and so forth. So basically it's just saying error opening file or possibly you know some other weird issue there. Uh, once it goes through all of that, then we're going to simply serial print uh, so this is actually going to be printed to the serial monitor uh, then serial.print basically writing to sd temperature f we're going to do that comma then we're going to do the timestamp then we're going to say done finally what i'm going to do here is i'm going to delay for 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds this is an important thing to be thinking about if you're going to be writing to an sd card is so normally like a lot of times when you run the uh, when the arduino code you don't really care how fast it loops like you may have to slow it down a little bit so you can read uh the serial monitor output but many times you don't really put a delay you just let this thing blast as fast as it wants to go do realize you are actually writing to an sd card uh the important thing is not the writing to the sd card writing to the SD card doesn't really matter it's it, it can keep up with it uh, the problem the problem that you can run into though is when you then pull the SD card out you plug it into your computer and then you try to read the information from the SD card if you simply let the Arduino write to the SD card as fast as it possibly can you're going to get a metric crap time of the crap ton of lines in your text file or your CSV file that may be difficult for your computer to go through and process. So something that you want to think about with this delay is again, basically how often do you really want to record the readings? Do you really need to record it every couple of milliseconds? Maybe you want to record it every second. Frankly, maybe you want to record it every five minutes, right? <laughs> right. Think about think about how much data you really need. So for this particular project, I'm going to set it at a delay for five seconds. But honestly, completely 100% honestly, if I was doing this in the real world, I would probably delay it out to be like a minute or so, basically right to the SD card every minute. Because realistically, again, like with a temperature value, do you really need anything more accurate than a minute? Something just to keep in mind. But this is basically... Uh, how the code looks here. So let's go over. I will actually uh, plug in, uh, plug in the SD card. We'll plug this into the computer, upload the code and see how it works. So here's our project. I'm going to be plugging this into uh, the computer so it'll be plugged into the computer now it is important to understand uh, that once the code has been uploaded to the Arduino you could simply plug this into a battery pack or you could simply plug this into a wall outlet and everything will work without the computer uh, but today we are going to be taking a look at the serial monitor uh, just for troubleshooting purposes so I will keep it uh, plugged into the computer uh, for the second I'm going to keep the SD card out so this is our little uh, 
data login module here's the SD card I'm going to keep the, the uh, SD card out so you can see how it initially fails on setup and then I'll plug it in then it will start recording values then I'll actually unplug uh, the SD card while it's still running we'll take a look at uh, what's been recorded to the SD card and then we'll shove it back in uh, once we're done taking a look just to show you how that little process works so with that let's go over to the computer and basically show you how all this functions so from here again just make sure you are on the right board so it is a, an Arduino Uno and you're connected to the right port once you know that you are then going to upload your code so you're going to wait as that code uploads and then from there we're going to go to tools and we're going to go to serial monitor to see uh, what's going on uh, so here we can see that it's initializing the SD card and we can see that start up SD card initial initialization failed and the reason is is as I showed you the SD card is literally just sitting on the desk it is not in the reader yet so what I'm going to do is right now I'm then going to plug the SD card into the reader and then we see the startup initialization success and then we can see it immediately goes into and it starts writing to the SD card so writing to SD and the temperature is 63.29 uh, and this is our little timestamp here again we're going through uh, every five seconds it'll write to the card um, I am now currently touching the analog temperature sensor just to show you that the temperature value will then go up Again, it's now going up to 71 degrees, and we have this little timestamp value here. So now that we have a little bit of information that has now been written to the SD card, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the SD card. So I'm simply going to pull the SD card out of the uh, data logging module while it's on, and uh, cross your fingers, nothing happens uh, horribly wrong uh, with this particular uh, experiment. So I'm going to pull the SD card out. So as I pull the SD card out, now we're going to see is but we're going to see a failure so see SD card no longer readable so this gives us a warning to know that there's a problem there I am then going to pull the push the micro SD card into its little adapter I'm going to then plug it into this computer and we're going to go down and hopefully in a second we're going to see that untitled SD card so this is the SD card I'm going to then open it up and we can see temp log.txt. I can then double click and there we go. So we have the, uh, the values that I was showing you. So 63.29 at this number of milliseconds, 73.84 at this millisecond, uh, again, 68.56 at this millisecond so again this is the temperature reading and we are using the timestamp simply the milliseconds since the Arduino was rebooted and we can see that information there so here in a text file again maybe that's useful maybe it's not the important thing I want you to understand again something to be thinking about when you're writing data to a file is think about writing it in such a way that other software can read it so if I close this out one of the things I can do is basically if I right click so if you're in the Windows world you could right click what we're going to do is an open with and if I click the open with I can open this with numbers and since this is essentially a CSV file what we're going to see here is when I open this up it now opens up automatically in a spreadsheet fashion and so even in a spreadsheet like this I could then start modifying the information or trying to look for uh, different information within what's being presented so again when you uh, basically when you save and do the equivalent of a CSV file then you can open it up in again uh, Excel or numbers or whatever else uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this I'm then going to eject I <laughs> do remember when you're dealing with like SD cards remember to eject them so that you don't screw them up somehow so I'm going to eject so that is now ejected what I'm then going to do is I'm going to take that micro SD card I am now plugging it back into that data logging module and basically as soon as I plug it back into the data logging module it's reading it again and it is now actually writing to to it um, and it just keeps trucking along so that's one of the things I like about the code here is basically with this code uh, it stops when it stops detecting the SD card but as soon as it detects the SD card again and it's able to write to it it then goes back to actually writing to it and so that's something that I like with this particular bit of code I will tell you in the example that they give so if you go up here to file you go to examples you go down to SD card and you go to the read write example here one of the things they have with that read write example is that it just fails out that 
basically when it stops detecting the card, uh, it fails, it doesn't go forward, so on and so forth. So one thing I like about this particular code that I, I wrote here is that if you pull the card out, it stops working, but as soon as you push the card back in, it starts working again. So that's something to be thinking about with your code. So there you go. Now you know how to write to your data logging modules SD card uh, using a simple analog uh, temperature sensor and an Arduino Uno. Again, this particular project is incredibly simple, so I probably not would not put something as simple as this into a real world environment, but it basically gives you the basis to understand how you can build something a little bit more complicated. Again, where you have a, a couple of different variables here, we have the variable values uh, for the actual temperature that's being read in real time. We have the variable value for the timestamp, again, the milliseconds since the Arduino started up. We are then saving those values into a text file, again, the temperature value, comma, space, and then whatever uh, the timestamp value is. That essentially is creating a CSV file that, you again, you can open in something like Excel or Numbers or even input into uh, something like a MySQL database. So this gives you a basic understanding of how this works how you do how you decide to do this in the real world is up to you I would recommend if you're going to use a timestamp in the real world do use a real-time clock again with a real-time clock module you can actually put what the time is into the real-time clock module and then you can read that value and store that Again, when you're storing the information in that CSV file, that is a much better way of dealing with a timestamp. But again, this just gives you a basic example here. The other thing I do like about this particular project is you're able to uh, basically put in and remove the SD card whenever you want, and it will basically stop working and then start working again whenever it detects that SD card. To be clear with this, by and large, it should be fine. By and large, it should be fine. You probably you should, probably won't run into any issues, but that is kind of a probably. <laughs> That is kind of a probably. You, you, would, you would want to test the hell out of uh, this particular system if you're going to be doing this in the real world because the last thing you want is if you have data that really is important, the last thing is to have that data get corrupted and then not be able to trust uh, what you're getting from the SD card. So that's just something to keep in mind. But otherwise, again, writing to the, the little data logging module is incredibly easy. Uh, you just have to be thinking about how you're going to be reading that information when you you do plug the SD card into the computer. Again, things like, you know, how long do you want the delay? Do you really want to write to the SD card as fast as the Arduino can loop? Uh, you can do that, you can do that. Again, writing to an SD card doesn't require very many resources. The problem is, is you just get this, this massive amount of text and that may end up not being that valuable. Uh, something important to be thinking about in the computer world is sometimes, sometimes it's better to have less data than more. Uh, so again, if I was going to create this kind of project in the real world, one of the things that I would do is I honestly, I would delay writing to the SD card to be probably every minute. You give, you give me 60 readings per hour, day in, day out. I'm going to be happy with 60 readings per hour. I don't need, you know, 60 times 60, you know, whatever. I don't need, you know, a gazillion freaking readings from a temperature sensor. So that's just one of those things to, to kind of keep in mind. Uh, so anyways, again, overall, a pretty cool project. As always, I enjoy doing this video and look forward to seeing you on the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.